So here we are at 15,500 feet. Uh, just installed a new twin Dyna. Uh, I think those are 12 inch screens. And uh, came with this D10A over here. And uh, while it was there, this was at St. Aviation in Dunlin, Florida, uh, X-35 Airport. Put in their uh, comp also. And uh, this was a last minute uh, decision to put this in. Wasn't going to put it in, didn't think I needed it. Uh, probably the best part of the system I've put in so far, or out of all of it, I'm most impressed with it. Anyway, we're at 15,500 feet. If you notice, I have an STEC 50 autopilot in here, along with my turn coordinator still. These shouldn't have to be here, but the integrated autopilot from Dynon uh, wasn't ready yet. So, Jesse and I put our heads together, and I said, Jesse, I don't. I don't want my uh, vacuum system in this plane anymore. These are both backed up by batteries. That's backed up by battery. Uh, I don't want the system. And he said, well, hey, Todd, how are you going to control your heading? You know, we got this heading bug here. And, you know, how are you going to control the heading for your autopilot? And I said, I don't care about that. I go direct everywhere with my uh, GPS. I have a GPS steer roll steering mode for this STEC 50. So I just dial in where I want to go, hit uh, GPSS, or if I uh, know the heading I'm going to be on, I can steer the airplane to the heading and just hit the standby mode, which will give me straight level, uh, and then I can turn the uh, autopilot to make it turn if I want to, or I can just hand fly it for those oh, minute or two that I would need. So this is temporary, but it's working great. As you can see, it's holding 15,500 feet, no problem. It's dead on. It's a great, uh, great autopilot, but when this goes back for the autopilot upgrade, probably in two or three months, these two units will come out. Jesse will uh, rebuild this side of the panel and repaint it flat black like you see it, and I'll have integrated in a autopilot, but for now I have to deal with this, which is no big deal. So... Again, it was uh, I already had the 530W. I didn't see any reason to change it because uh, I use this for everything, really. I have a 450B audio panel, which I love. This is a great piece of equipment with dual Bluetooth capability and uh, multiple ways you can disperse the music or the intercom amongst the people in the plane. And I have a Stratus ADS-B out uh, transponder. Uh, that was put in before the 530W was put in, so it is using its own WAS uh, uh, GPS to, uh, uh, to give us our ADS-B out. And ADS-B in, I have through uh, the Dynon system here, and it says we're receiving uh, four minutes old, and uh, everything's working, so not much traffic up here. Okay, so now that you've seen this, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. So you can see the screen's a little better. It'll You'll lose the Dynon over here on the left. Or the D10A, I should say. Oh, wait. No, you know, it won't let, let me zoom in uh, without making another video. So I'm just going to leave this on, and uh, uh, you won't, might not be able to see exactly what I'm showing you, but I'll point it out to you. So right now I'm in... Uh, Full screen over here with a map. It has all my uh, uh, waypoint information and flight information. GPS altitude, my next waypoint. Distance to waypoint. ETE, which is 58 minutes, our current location. Our destination waypoint, which is the same thing as our next because we're on that leg. 142 miles to go, 58 minutes. I'll be there at 1713 uh, Zulu time. And our current pace, if I started down at 240 foot per minute, I would arrive there. So, uh, basically in the middle of uh, Atlanta, or middle of uh, Georgia. I have a full screen over here uh, with a highway at the sky bars. If you don't like those highway at the sky bars, you can go to menu, PFT tools, turn off highway at the sky. Now the highway at the sky boxes are gone. I, they're kind of neat. I had them on my G3X, and after a while, you just learn to shut them off. I, I don't need them. Um, it's, it's gimmick to me, but it does. if you like it, you like it. 
What I can also go to is go into display here and do split content. And I can either put my engine instruments over here. They were on the bottom, the CHT EGTs. But if I want to bring them up big to see what I'm looking at, I can see all the CHTs separately, all the EGTs. And I can also see my fuel here. It's saying my uh, fuel remaining is 52 gallons. And according to my gauges, I got about uh, 48, 49. So that's off by about four, but close enough. I've used 36 gallons since I took off. I'm getting 10.1 miles per gallon and at our waypoint I'll have 38 miles when I get there so I'll have, or 38 gallons so I'll have 38 gallons remaining when I land and my current fuel burn and wind my range is 520 miles so there we are if I want uh, more information there we are I can do that and I go back in and put my map on my split screen too so I can usually, what I usually do is I set this map to a little lower uh, range, like 12 miles, 12 miles in a range here. And, uh, or you could even go to an eight mile range. Lay this one ranged out so I get a big weather picture here, big weather picture here, as, or smaller here. And as you can see, there is really not much weather in the United States right now. I'm flying through a big high pressure system coming through and uh, there's just no nothing on the radar so there we are. And as I yeah, this is all touch screen if I want to scroll on the map I can scroll it down I can I can tap on something and find out what it is that's Mavkin it's a fix okay and then just kick it off and there we are. I can shut off if I want full screen for the map, because if I don't want to see my CHTs down here, I hit that button and it goes full screen here on this side, or full half screen, I should say. I like to have my engine instruments up, so uh, I don't mind losing a little bit of map there. I can also, with the hold down of the button, bring the any uh, chart I want up here. So terminal procedure. This is where I took off from. This was Fort Myers and that was the runway map. So I left that on for taxi and takeoff and then I just held down on the button. Brings me back here. So pretty easy. Uh, the airplane performs like it should. I had no fuel flow indicator and a very limited uh, engine monitor. That's one of the reasons I went to this engine mon or to this system was for the engine monitor. And uh, it's make a book, uh, just what my uh, POH tells me here, good old Cessna POH from 1979. I'm getting 160 thr three, excuse me, 163 knots on 25 inches of manifold pressure, 2200 RPM, 14.5 gallons per hour. The book says I should be getting 162 knots, so I'm doing a knot better, but hey, it is just me in the plane, and uh, we're now due, uh, oh, little more than half fuel so we're a little light maybe got 100 pounds of bags back here so uh, I'd say we're making book uh, book no problem again if I look at my engine instruments I am a little disappointed in my uh, how hot my engine runs uh, my low uh, low is 380 my number two excuse me uh, 377 my number six my number five's running 405 and my number four's running 399. I'd like to see those below 400 all the time. Um, in the climb, they get up around 410. Uh, you know, they say red line is until 500 on the light coming, but I disagree. So I set my red line for 450, and I started my yellow arc at 410. And uh, at this power setting, it's according to the light coming perfectly fine. I'm going to rework the baffling there. Uh, one thing I would like to show you is the uh, this comp. This is pretty cool. What's cool about it is if I just hit airport button down here, it shows my nearest airports. And there's Alma, DHC, AZE, uh, DH, or DQH, which is Douglas, I think, uh, Waycross, RVJ. So I can hit any of them and just hit tower, or I can select it and hit tower. There's their comp. They don't have, uh, it's obviously an un, uh, uh, uncontrolled airfield, so no tower, just gives me their unicom. 
And uh, that, that's awesome. Flip-flop, you just hit the button, volume's there. Super simple, tells you who the com is, shoots it up here, who you're talking to, KJES on 122.8, and it's just that easy. So, and then my uh, standby is Fort Myers, where I took off from, 119.0 is in standby, which it shows there. If I flip-flop it, it'll put Fort Myers Tower there, and KJES Unicom on that side. Really cool. The next cool thing is the the uh, three knobs you get to control your your bugs. I have a heading, dedicated heading and track bug. It, it controls the heading here, and then it'll also you move this big blue line here, which I really like seeing that. So that that's heading, and then you can sync it just by pressing in. Then barometer, I can manually change my barometer. We're currently at 30.1, or 30, there's 30.1. I can put it back, but the real cool thing about this, just hold in on this barometer, boom. It automatically selects the nearest airport, which is KBHC, which is 29.9 in, eight inches. So just by holding in that barometer, it five, five, excuse me, <laughs> can't talk. Better check my oxygen here, hold on. Yeah, we're good. So, <laughs> it automatically fills the nearest airport just by holding the barometer. I also have an altitude bug. I currently have it at 15.5 is right where we're at. And I have additional bugs over here. I have course. I have minimums. I can set my minimums here. I have altitude, or which is over there. And I have vertical speed. And I have an indicated airspeed bug. And those bugs will be put, uh, I will get those when I, my autopilot gets put in down here. So when this comes out, this comes out, this panel's also going to come out, which controls mostly my autopilot, and there's going to be a three-knob bug here for indicated airspeed, vertical speed, and minimums. All right there for my autopilot. And that's going to be really nice. So the three things I'm going to be using the most will be this, these three items, all here, easily accessible. And it all flows real nice. Very clean panel. So, I don't know really what else to show. Um, you know, like I said, there's engine content. There's map. I can swap this screen with that screen. Uh, I have weather options. I can animate the weather or not animate it. I can turn off the next rad. I can turn off the pie reps. All just by clicking here. Um, engine tools. There's a, a fuel in here. I can set the fuel. It'll tell me, hey, your current fuel computer quantity says there's 50 gallons in, but measured in tank is 48, so it's off by two now. When I get on, when I fuel up, it'll notice a huge difference. Uh, it'll notice there'll be 30 gallons or 40 gallons difference. It'll say, hey, do you want me to match those? And I'll hit yes, because it'll say that the tanks are fuel full. Automatic done. Or I can just hit the full button. So that's pretty cool. Um, nearest button here shows the nearest airports just with the touch of a button. Bang, bang, bang. Nearest weather. If you see all VFR, day like today, I don't need an instrument playing, obviously. Uh, so good. Nearest VORs. Nearest ATC is kind of nice. If you get uh, really screwed up, hey, Jacksonville on 12.9 at a 182 bearing. Uh, there's the frequency. I can hit it, and it'll pre-fill it into the uh, radio down here. That's pretty cool. So um, I just touch that, hit tune comp, lowers it down here into the uh, standby. Then you see here, JAX 127.575. I can flip-flop it. Boom, now JAX goes to the primary. So pretty cool. Uh, other than that, there's all sorts of stuff. This is just be a uh, just meant to be a general description. Very impressed. Very impressed. My autopilot's still working, and it does a great job. Someone's going to get a good deal on an STEC 50. It's almost brand new itself, so pretty good deal. And other than that, uh, you know, the oxygen works great in this plane, and uh, a great run in airplane. Like I said, just got to get them CHTs down. I'm going to work on the baffling at the next annual, see what we can do. It's not critical, but just a little worse. Uh, and one thing I noticed, too, is uh, yellow line for oil pressure on this plane, 60. 
I'm running a constant 5758, so by installing this uh, system, I learned that I'm running just a tad low on the oil pressure, so uh, my old oil pressure gauge was uh, kind of just above the yellow line, so I think it was off a little. I'll, this is a, I'm going to have the mechanic bump up my oil pressure about 5 to 10 PSI, just for good measure. Um, like I said, wish I could show more. I don't have the, auto, the Dynon Autopilot installed, so nothing to really show you with VNAV or descents or climbs or indicated airspeed climbs. Can't do it. Um, I can play with the bugs, you know. I can sit here and uh, hit my indicated airspeed and say, oh, yeah, I want to climb at 120 knots. Put the bug on 120, pitch for it. I can do it manually, but until the autopilot's done, I'm kind of stuck. Uh, well, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me a message. Um, you know, you can also put a little bit of uh, music on in 450B if you get bored, you start up and uh, like I said it's pretty cool you can uh, just go into entertainment and music distribution I can co-pilot I currently have shut off but I could hook them to BT1 or BT2 like mine I, I'm listening to both now so really great audio panel So that works good. Other than that, I don't know what to show you. I don't want to make this video too long and boring. So have a great day.